Welcome back to the Tomarosa. It's been a little while, but as you can see, winter has arrived. And today we're going to give you an update on how our cows are doing. We are a 100% grass-fed dairy, and normally we graze from April to October, and that's what we have been doing, and this snow brought a sudden stop to that. So we have now transitioned to hay, which is just dried grass that we put up ourselves and uh, store for winter. So that's what the girls are eating now out of the homemade feeder that we built a couple years ago that's still still serving them well. other feeder and this is a feeder we first built for the original cows when they were calves and now our current calves are using this. We like that because it allows them to eat without having to compete against the bigger cows and we get to reuse it. Behind me is our big hay pile. Uh, it is uh, mostly grass with some alfalfa. Uh, this year it was pretty difficult conditions for putting up hay. The weather was just not cooperative. Um, but we got a beautiful second cutting out of our new alfalfa field, so uh, we're very happy with that. And uh, we kind of have it layered like a cake, so uh, we'll just be feeding out of this pile for the winter. Here is our update on our calves. You may remember this is Rainy. This was the first calf that was born. And he is about six months now, so he is almost ready to be weaned on our farm. Over here we have closest to me, the youngest, Comet. Comet was born July 22nd, so July to August, September, about three months. And then Dodie with the purple collar is about five and a half months. She is our sole heifer this year. And we're going to wean uh, Dodie and Rainy together probably in about a week. Comet's still going to have access to his mother, Carnation, uh, to do some nursing twice a day. But we are starting to keep them more of what has been called like a kindergarten situation. And they like it. I think they like being in their own little herd where they don't have to compete against the cows. They get to have their own hay feeder and they sleep separately. Chicken, what are you doing? I am trying to talk here. Quiet on the set. Um, so I'll take the camera. And I'll just show you a little bit about what's going on. So here is their hay feeder. And then this is the little area. Well, actually, they were born, except for Dodie, who was born out in the field. We have made a separate entry and exit lane. So the calves can now come in and out of the barn, separate from the cows. So here's Rainy. And then they can go out to their own separate paddock that we can extend during the winter to give them fresh ground. And then the mama cows and Daisy have their own section here of the barn. And they too also have their own open access out to their own paddock that's separate from the calves. And then we can give them different ground through the winter. And that way they all get to see each other and they can touch noses and things like that. But when we don't want them to do any type of nursing, they won't do any nursing. Here we are in the milking parlor. I know it's echoey. We're just gonna do a short segment here. It's very, very important. Hold well, on, let me get you so I can see you. Oh, I thought you were gonna come down here. No, here you go. Okay, this is our gestation tabulator. This is where we track uh, breeding of the cows. So uh, the yellow here means that they have all been bred. And we did a blood test earlier this week. Uh, Virginia drew the blood. And we just got the results. So uh, pin number four here, which is the first uh, animal we bred, is Daisy. And I am happy to report that I can turn it to green as she is confirmed pregnant. If you recall, uh, we tried uh, breeding her several times last year and uh, it didn't take. Uh, so number two is Rose, 
and she is confirmed pregnant. Uh, number one here is Buttercup. She is confirmed pregnant. And last but not least, Carnation, number three here, confirmed pregnant. So all four of our uh, big girls are confirmed pregnant. And including Daisy, who is still a heifer. And as a seasonal dairy, we did a pretty good uh, job because it's only a 31 day spread from the first to the last. Uh, so from early May to early June, they should all calve in. Just in time for the good grass. Tonight, it's supposed to be seven degrees, so we went ahead and brought out our stock tank heaters. This is the one we have that we've been using and it works very well. We also bought a heated bucket for the calves and Stacy designed this ingenious system of using this pipe and you just hook it up like this and you turn on the water from our frost free hydrant and because we position the bucket accordingly we just do this. You can fill the bucket too. That way you don't have any hoses or anything you have to drain. And it's super fast and easy. And it's pretty cow destructible. It's pretty cow indestructible. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Actually cows will destroy it if they can. But yeah, so we uh, got our frost free water system set up. After getting the water set up, we're pretty much transitioned to winter housing and everything for the cows, including management. We've got hay for them. They've got their own access out to pasture. They've got water that won't freeze. And the calves have their own separate place, which is kind of nice because for about six and a half months, we've been moving them every day. And it'll be nice to kind of transition into a little bit of a slower pace. We also got some good test results on our cow's milk. We sent in samples to DHIA, which is Dairy Herd Improvement Association. And that is just a service that dairy farmers can send in. They have information for all across the country for dairy herds. And one of the things they test is somatic cell count, which is abbreviated SCC. That is the amount of white blood cells which are in the milk and can be an indicator of infection. You want to be under 100,000 normally for just a healthy cow. Anything under over 200,000 would indicate some type of infection. So for our cows, crazy chicken. For our cows, let's see, carnation was 15,000 and buttercup was 60,000 and rose was 47,000. That would indicate that they're all doing well, and we're very happy about that. They also tested butter fat, and when you buy milk in the grocery store that's whole milk, it's been standardized to 3.25% butter fat. And our is an average of about 5%. Rose actually does 5.49%, and Daisy's like, what about me? We don't have milk from you yet, Daisy, but soon, because you're pregnant. There's also solids non-fat, which indicates maybe that the milk would be good for making cheese. Ours was above or average around 9.6 or 8%, I think, and that's a good indicator that it would also make good cheese, which from Jersey cows, normally they're known for having good milk for cheese and butter fat. So yay, good results on our milk test and we're very happy about it. This is Rose. She's slightly aloof, uh, but she is a rock solid uh, milk cow. Her production is very steady day in and day out. I mean, almost to the exact tenth of a pound every day. So she does a really good job and uh, they all behave well in the parlor, but she behaves really well. She uh, when you're milking her, she likes to lower her head and look back at you, see what's going on. That's Daisy. She's heading out. So she is a heifer. And she is pregnant finally. And she just hangs out. In the morning, when it's time to milk, the other three cows will be up standing, ready to get milked. She'll be still lying down. She's like, I don't have a reason to get up. 
So she's kind of a lazy bum. But that's going to change next year. This is Carnation drinking some water. She's a good milk cow too. Uh, she was the one I was probably most worried about as far as being a milk cow, you know, being kicking and stuff in the parlor. But when she became a mama, she settled way down. Um, she's a good milk cow too. And she really loves her baby and, and really takes care of her baby. This is Buttercup eating. She is the friendliest, I think, of all our cows. She really likes attention. Um, she was the first one to calf, and so her milk, uh, she's still doing well, but she makes a little bit less milk than all the others. And she had a little more trouble holding on to body condition, especially right after she calved. But she's doing pretty good now, I think. Um, she's putting some weight back on for winter. but. She, she, she's a good cow. They're all good cows. I just love all our cows. So, Buttercup is also our most vocal cow. Um, it can be disconcerting when you're hearing mooing because you're wondering, you know, do they not have water? Are they out of feed? But I think she just moves sometimes just to moo. And obviously when she is not happy, like yesterday when it was snowing, I think she took it as a personal affront that it was snowing and she couldn't go out to graze. And so she was just mad at the world, mooing at the world. She'd just stand here in the doorway looking out into the snow mooing. So she's a very vocal cow. That's, that's why she, we gave her some hay so she wouldn't interrupt me when we were trying to film. Yeah. We're getting a little shaggy for winter, getting their winter coats. I will say that Buttercup has the best udder, like, especially if you ever wanted to hand milk her. All four teats are really nice and, and long and they're all squarely placed. Uh, Rose, the back two teats, they're really close together, so that's a little annoying, but uh, Buttercup has a nice udder for milk. So one thing I forgot to mention about Carnation is she is the most eager cow to get into the parlor to get milk. Well there you go, that is our cow update. We're very happy all seven of our bovines are doing well. Uh, Thank you for joining us on this uh, nice wintry day on the Tomarosa. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Uh, we'd appreciate it. And uh, we also appreciate your comments. So until next time, stay warm. <laughs>